we met online in 2019 um, and didn't actually meet in person for another six months. Um, I was in the middle of my avalanche forecasting season and so we started up a serious relationship after a, a couple weeks and um, yeah, I met her in Antananarivo in August of 2019. And you got married when? Uh, March. March of 2021. And now you live in Washington State? Yes. In the United States. What, Naisa, when you first came to the United States, what surprised you? Just like for like lunch, is that was already like sh uh, very shocking to me because in Madagascar, like lunch is supposed to be like a familial thing and uh, workers come back home during lunch time and um, we just share lunch with family. We have big meal that we cook during the morning and here lunch is just like a snack and uh, people just eat like peanut butter with like it just yeah it's it that was like I really had to adjust a lot with that it took me probably like a, a whole year yeah and something that was really shocking to me too uh, as a woman is in Madagascar like men hit on hit on you like you 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 have like 10 at least 10 men a day hit on you in a daily basis like every day and uh, here in the US they don't even look at you <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah first I, I thought I was like wait I, I'm I I'm, not, like, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I'm not attractive for this country or what like uh, but then yeah I realized that men are just so respectful mm -hmm. toward women and I'm really grateful for that yeah I really I really like that way so um, Robert how many women did you hit on in Madagascar <laughs> <laughs> not very many <laughs> Not very many, but you didn't like uh, adopt local practices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I bring my my U.S. respect towards women <laughs> yeah. when I when I travel. So, so what shocked yeah. you when you went to Madagascar? You know, I, I'd spent uh, 27 months in the Peace Corps in Uganda. So when I was actually in Madagascar, I think the differences were were more subtle, but there were a lot of differences. Um, I think one of the the most surprising things was just how um, how close-knit the extended extended families are um, particularly in the villages where pretty much everyone is related uh, that that was the case in Uganda but it's even more I mean every every house um, within a certain radius um, is genetically related um, in in most of the villages in Madagascar um, I think another thing that that surprised me was um, just how far removed from the grid um, a lot of these rural villages are. Um, you know, even in 2017, there were people, you know, who had never seen a smartphone or, you know, didn't own a cell phone of any kind, um, had never seen a picture of themselves um, and never, um, never been in a car. We've yeah, exactly, really... exactly, and okay. um, you know some of the um, some of the su superstitious elements of the culture were were stronger than they were in in Uganda. Um, the religion hadn't religion had penetrated, but it it had allowed for um, some of the the local religious pra practices to to coexist. Actually, per perhaps the most surprising thing for me was to see national highways where they they and they end up being a hiking trail because there are so many bridges out that you simply can't drive a car efficiently on these highways um, some some of them still can be used by a car but you really have to be intrepid to want to actually use this as a car there's a usually a person with a bock a bock is a, basically a floating um, a bunch of floating jerry cans with a wooden planks on it and somebody hand pushes this raft across a river outlet um, and gets you to the other side and so there there was one national highway that I took um, going between 
the, the areas of Tamatave and um, on the East Coast, which is a main port city, heading northward um, to uh, the vanilla growing region in the Northeast. It, took, it takes two days to take a four by four along this road to Mananara, and it takes, uh, the, the particular section I'm talking about, it takes three days to walk. So there were sections where I would actually pass the vehicle and the vehicle would pass me. And, you know, it, it was it was one of those things where I thought about take, taking the vehicle and then I decided I would be a lot more, a, a lot happier just walking. And I I was very glad when I saw people throwing up off, off these things that I'd chosen to walk. <laughs> <laughs> what surprised you, Naisa, about the... Uh, the way that the men and women treat each other in the United States couples versus the way Malagasy couples treat each other. A, a couple in the U.S. really work as a as a team, whereas in Madagascar, it's kind of like uh, women do this and uh, men do this. And people, uh, a couple in, in the U.S. really um, share like uh, doing fun together, fun activities together, which is really rare to see that in a couple in Madagascar. Um, it's usually like men have men do have like social life, and uh, they, they 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 usually do like a soccer, play soccer, or play something, play like cards. And the women like if a woman if a woman do that, it's it's not like it's not like well viewed. By the, the society like she she's not really uh, committed to to her household because she's expected to do stuff like really dedicate her life to the household and raising kids so a couple really don't don't share anything fun it, to me if I were a woman in Madagascar I would rather be with uh, in the American culture it sounds better but that's maybe because of my cultural bias what about for, um, do you know Malagasy women who prefer the way Malagascar culture is, the Malagasy culture is, and would say, you know, even if they had the option of living the American lifestyle and the way you described men mm -hmm. and women, even if they had that option, they would rather have the Malagascar way of doing things. I, I personally don't know, uh, like an example, but the... Uh... I think, uh, but maybe like just because they used that's all they saw, and they they would prefer to 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 stick with that. But uh, um, maybe there 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 are like I, I I prefer to to have an activity. For example, me personally, I do dance and uh, I I have uh, yeah I have like social life. I prefer that. Yeah. I think a lot of. Malagasy's in general would struggle coming over here just from a motivational perspective and pro productivity perspective. You know, they're very comfortable in the sort of laid back, relaxed sort of life. Mm -hmm. They can do their their chores, their daily routine. But if you if you got them into the higher pace, higher stress situation uh, in the U.S., they would struggle. Fadi is a really interesting one that's kind of unique to Madagascar. Um, it's um, it's it's part of the tra traditional superstition. Superstition Fadi means the things that you're not allowed to do. Forbidden, yeah. Mm -hmm. So these can range from wearing red uh, in certain parts of Madagascar to eating goat, or in most of the country, um, eat, eating eat, pork eating pork um, or dog dog is really a that one is that one is a serious no-no even even to um, compare someone to a dog would be one of the biggest insults in Madagascar um, but the really funny one for me was that salt in certain parts of northern Madagascar cannot be sold at night and I was preparing for an overnight trip into Marujeji National Park, uh, where you can see um, a large white sifaka, uh, a certain lemur relative. And I, w I was preparing around 6 p.m. in the tropics, the sun sets right around 6, went to the local store, the only game in town, and I showed up and they said, we don't have salt. And I, I went back to my guide and I said, 
you know, they, they, we can't get any salt. This is this is problematic for. And he said, "Oh yeah, it's it's Fadi. You must have arrived after after the sunset." And uh, sure enough, I went in the morning to the same shop. Up oh, there's salt. <laughs> <laughs> So it's it's a really interesting thing, and you know they didn't they didn't try to explain it. They just, you know, there 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 was there was no look on their face like something strange had occurred. But from my perspective, it was incredibly bizarre. Um, so yeah, Fadi is 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 definitely a major part of the culture, and and particularly in rural areas, it's it's um, it's quite prevalent. What are some of the U.S. fadis? Because, for example, in the United States, we also, unfortunately, don't eat dog either. <laughs> <laughs> you, it was really surprising me the way American, American people treat uh, dogs like, like part of their, as part of their family. And, uh, yeah, it just, like, it's not allowed to, to our house, especially in my, uh, the, my uh, hometown. We're really not allowed to to have dogs in her in our uh, house. That's that that's just like fuzzy, and uh, yeah, we would we would never kiss them and we would never let them uh, eat in our plate. Like that's like no 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 big no. Um, and uh, also some something that shocked me here was actually like telling someone that they've gained weight in Madagascar is a big compliment. That's like a compliment. Um, but here, <laughs> don't you ever say that to someone. <laughs> so yeah, that, that fortunately I never, never say that to someone, but yeah, I've noticed that you, you even just like, uh, talking about someone's physique is not really allowed here. But in Madagascar, we do that all the time. Oh, you've gained weight. Oh, uh, tell me your secret. You know, so that's like a good thing there. But here it's not. Uh huh. Is saying that you're skinny or looks like you lost weight, is that an insult? Um, it's not an insult, but it, it doesn't make the person feel good. Yeah. Because like uh, losing weight is... Uh, it's it just not well viewed in Madagascar because it people assume that your your uh, lifestyle or is being decreased or you're not eating enough or you you're sick uh yeah so yeah that's why yeah and you know the the two things that naisa's mom really wants out of me are <laughs> to keep Na naisa fat well she's not fat <laughs> but to 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 keep her you know, a, a little, a little on the uh, heavier side, because Heavy. that that tells her that I'm feeding her well, mm -hmm. and, and that you're treating me well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the and the other thing is, she wants me to get her pregnant <laughs> because she wants grandkids, um, and I failed in that capacity. Um, you failed on both. <laughs> <laughs> right, I failed. I failed, failed on both, really. So, uh, you know, I, I think with the kids, you know. Mostly, uh, Naisa's mom is really trying to get Naisa to to move forward on that front. But uh, <laughs> you know, if I bring if I joke about the subject, uh, it's not a joke for Naisa's mom. <laughs> <laughs> How has the culture in the United States about body shape influenced you and the way you look at yourself? I'm, did before you met Robert or come to the United States, did you Naisa think to yourself? I want to get fatter, I want to get fatter, I want to get fatter. And then you came to the United States and said, oh, no, I'd rather now get thinner and thinner. I don't know. Uh, I, no, I've always been comfortable with my, my body. And uh, I never let people influence my, my view on that. So, yeah, that, that didn't really affect me. But perhaps I want, I want to get stronger. And that, I think, is influenced by the... Uh, um, yeah, but why I see because I, I I usually hang out with like super uh, fit uh, yeah people so that like made me oh I want to be stronger but uh, not really like the weight not I yeah that doesn't affect me. What about the future of Madagascar? How do you guys look at 
the future. Right now, it's one of the 10 poorest countries on the planet. Do you see that changing in the next 10, 20 years? It's a tough question. The, the country is very mildly democratic and its leadership is teetering on the edge of authoritarianism. Um, corruption is really in, entrenched um, to the point that it's very difficult for NGOs to operate. And the ed educational system is one of the worst that I've encountered in the world. The, the, the growth rate are, is gonna mean that the economy is gonna grow, but the question is, is it gonna develop beyond a resource extractive economy um, and and will it will it tap into the energy of its youthful population or will that youthful population and probably growing unemployment kind of serve to destabilize it? And I think um, I think it's going to be very hard to predict that at the moment. I, I do think that the the stability in the country is its biggest asset. Um, but that stability doesn't extend to all corners of, of the country. This southern Madagascar is, um, is stricken with, with persistent famine um, in the southwest where um, overgrazing and, and rainfall have limited, um, limited opportunities for, for agriculture. Um, and so you know, nutrition is a major problem. Um, a lot of the people in, that, in those regions are moving into other parts of Madagascar and bringing their overgrazing practices, which could lead to, to a destabilization of areas of the north. Um, but overall, I, I do think that um, increased access to the outside world, increased access to more globalized ways of doing things and a desire to improve will start to lift Madagascar, but whether it lifts it faster than, you know, the other countries in the bottom 10 is, is hard to say. I, I, don't, I don't see a rapid uh, shift from its current position, but I think, that, I think that in 50 years, Madagascar is not gonna be in, in, the, in the bottom 10. You said something that's kind of depressing and, and telling for somebody who's so well-traveled as yourself, when you said that the education system is one of the worst you've ever seen. Give me an example and an anecdote of why you believe that. Yeah, the, f the first year or two I traveled, I met a lot of Peace Corps volunteers in the country. They, they are struggling to really get basic literacy uh, in English and Madagascar struggles because it's teaching people French and the local population wants that, particularly in tourist areas, wants to learn English because that that's where the increase in visitor numbers is, is coming in. Speaking of, of romance languages is very rare in southern Madagascar. They can't find enough teachers for English and French even. And uh, just just getting just getting a language that can interface with the outside world is very challenging in, in many parts of Madagascar. So that's why the urban areas that are connected with infrastructure and things like that are accelerating, um, and I, I think doing relatively well at the at the moment. Uh, but there's a huge urban rural divide, and so just from a large town to an area even five or 10 kilometers away is night and day. Future of Madagascar, what do you think in 20 years? Do you think it's gonna be in the bottom 10 economically? There's like a lot of work to do. I, I think we need to be more productive because we really, we're, we're not productive at all. Uh, I mean, like Madagascar people still take siesta. So, you know, like the, we need to increase our uh, um, hours of productivity and we need to work hard um, and uh, yeah like like let's start with that we need to 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 uh, to change our behavior and uh, yeah being more productive and um, yeah I, I actually think like um, 
the uh, the language is a it is it is an issue with the education because in Madagascar the course the courses the lessons are in French not even in in Malagasy so as as a result students need to both learn French and learn the yeah, lessons so it's like two two tasks like it, it makes it really difficult even for them to understand their lessons because it's it's not their native language um i mean the the good thing with it is we we're very good with french but it's it it really like delays our education